July 21st marked a red letter day for the province of Ontario with the opening of the Ontario Food Terminal. Producers, distributors and consumers alike all benefit from what is believed to be the only complete wholesale fresh fruit and vegetable market on the continent. This new four million dollar 52 acre terminal contains 36 wholesale firms, a farmers and truckers market, office space, cold storage and railway facilities. Located just outside the city limits on Toronto's west side, the terminal's spacious and modern facilities have already shortened retail handling time by 12 hours, and a fresher product may now be displayed on provincial counters. Opening day ceremonies took place in the 200-foot wide center court, which is enclosed on three sides by the main building. The Ontario Food Terminal Board, consisting of three members representing the growers, three representing the wholesalers, and the chairman in the person of Mr. G.F. Perkin, were introduced to the assembled guests. Mr. Perkin also serves as Provincial Commissioner of Marketing. Chairman of the event, the Honorable F.S. Thomas, Ontario's Minister of Agriculture, outlined the benefits of the Ontario Food Terminal, which affect both rural and urban life. Premier of Ontario, Leslie Frost, stressed that the food terminal marked another substantial step in provincial progress. Public demand, he said, made the government's role of planning, financing, and administration for this enterprise a pleasant one. Especially pleased on this occasion was the former Minister of Agriculture, Colonel Thomas L. Kennedy. He and his associates originally conceived the idea of a central market for fruit and vegetables over 20 years ago. The growers of Ontario were among the first to realize the need for the terminal and worked with Colonel Kennedy to make it a reality. Following his remarks, Colonel Kennedy unfurled the flag, officially opening the new food terminal. The Honorable George Doucette, Minister of Highways, unveiled a plaque commemorating the opening. The plaque is dedicated to Premier Frost and Colonel Kennedy. The Honorable W. Greisinger, Minister of Public Works, extended good wishes for success from all his department. In the general office, the nerve center of the terminal, General Manager George Reynolds controls the activities which annually do a business in excess of $50 million. The second floor of both produce buildings provide 40,000 square feet of office space. Telephones and telegraph lines are carried in the latest underfloor duct systems. Tenants of the food terminal are the second heaviest users of telephones in the Dominion. Only brokerage houses exceed their annual bill. Market activity is at a peak in the early morning when movement of trucks and freight cars is most evident. The eight acre team track area, handling produce directly from the freight car to the retailer's truck, can receive and unload 225 cars per day. House tracks, with a capacity of 32 cars, provide easy access to the unloading docks for night operations. The asphalt apron around the buildings is equivalent in area to 11 miles of highway. Upwards of 275 truckloads of goods for cold storage or short holdover before delivery can be unloaded at one time. Much of the terminal operates around the clock. Freight cars are able to spot within easy access to the appropriate warehouses, and from here the produce may be loaded into transports for delivery to distant points. From this one wholesale firm alone, 75 trucks, one leaving every two minutes, start their all-night journeys. All house tracks must be cleared by 5 a.m. This means a busy night. Like the terminal itself, the restaurants never close, and coffee is served almost without asking. The cold storage plant is at the east end of the main building. Its 720,000 cubic feet of space make it the largest one-floor plant in Canada. It is divided into eight equal lockers. Each locker may store limitless citrus fruit, apples, greens, and other vegetables. Farm market and wholesale dealers make extensive use of this storage space. Humidity and temperature are controlled down to 30 degrees by the forced air refrigeration system, which eliminates all dripping from overhead pipes. Vegetable prepacking, celery hearting, and banana and tomato ripening are carried on in these 20 stores, which flank the cold storage on the north and south. 
Farmers of Ontario also benefit from the food terminal through the use of the Farmers and Truckers Market. Here the farmer bypasses the middleman by selling directly to the retailer. Space for 400 trucks has been provided with adequate selling aisles for each one. Farmers from far and near bring their produce to this market five days a week. A public convenience office and service building is located in the center. All services in the terminal were installed underground to improve appearance and allow greater accessibility. At least one third of the major operations of the new terminal is the commercial wholesale business. Although the team track and cold storage operations are vital, the 36 firms which operate in the produce buildings do the greatest volume of business. These firms handle every conceivable fresh fruit and vegetable. Their annual volume exceeds 200,000 tons. The telephone is an integral piece of equipment along with conveyors and hand trucks. Offices above the units handle the voluminous paperwork entailed in operations, while a floor office keeps the stock records and checks on immediate transactions. The 62 units are rented out on a 30-year lease basis. After that time, the dealers will own their units and the original government expense will have been repaid. Floor level throughout the three buildings has been built on a common truck bed height, allowing for ease in unloading trucks and trains as well as an unbroken level from the stores to the coolers. The Ontario Food Terminal, a complete public enterprise, is easily accessible to both rail and truck transportation and is also convenient to wholesalers and retailers. Its prime objective is to reduce old marketing costs and to provide more spacious quarters to shorten time and increase efficiency in handling produce. This food terminal is, therefore, a classic example of how government and private industry can work together for the good of the community at large.